we have got to flee from our sin. And the sad fact is a lot of people are not fleeing from their sin, but they're fleeing to excuses. They're trying to justify something. Even me, until God saved me a year and a half ago, I tried to justify sin. I tried to justify that masturbation was not a sin. And so we're about to watch a video and Pastor Tim is going to ask Pastor Tim session he's going to address, is masturbation a sin? This is an important one. Dan asks, is masturbating a sin? I want to deal with that. Any of you that read through your Bible completely, read through it repeatedly, you know that the term masturbation does not show up in the Scriptures, at least distinctly by that term. So, we need to look for help with this, maybe in another area. You know what I thought when I started thinking about this? Now obviously, the Word of God is where we have to go to get our answers. And well, we're going to go there in just a second. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to appeal to these folks by their own conscience first. And I got thinking about this. Just ask them, if you knew that Jesus Christ was coming in 24 hours, would you spend the next 24 hours masturbating? You know what? You can look at that. You can think, you, you can think, well, that's, that's a funny thing. But I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Because, look, this guy's asking the question, is masturbation sin? And if it isn't, what's wrong with spending the next 24 hours doing it if Jesus Christ is coming? But I'm appealing to your conscience. You know you would not do that. I don't think there's a single one of you in here that would try to justify masturbation at that point. Not a one of you. As though, well, the Bible doesn't prohibit it. Yeah, but your own conscience tells you there's an uncleanness there. You would not want to spend your time between now and 24 hours. And I'll tell you folks, this is not a foolish question. What does your conscience tell you? What does it tell you? Does it tell you it's okay? Does it tell you it's, it's a clean thing? Are there any of you right there, right now, thinking, well, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a clean thing. It's a good thing. It's an upright thing. It, it, yeah, I'm pretty confident it glorifies God. None of you are there. None of you are thinking that. People typically ask this question, is masturbation sin? when they're trying to justify some ungodly practices. That's typically where that comes from. You know what your conscience tells you? It tells you it's shameful. It tells you it's wrong. Now, let's, let's lay some biblical support down. Because you know what? I know the problems that people, how many of the young folks that are being converted one after another, even some young ladies addicted to pornography. And I guarantee you, the masturbation thing goes hand in hand with this addiction to pornography. And so this is something that needs to be dealt with. This is something, this is not a question that only a few people might wonder about. This is something that I, we really need to lay a biblical basis for. So how about this? Romans 13, 13. Romans 13.13 13. Let us walk properly as in the daytime. Not in orgies. You see, Paul lived in the real world. He knew sexual sin was an issue. Let us walk properly 
as in the daytime, not in orgies, drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy. Here's the thing I'd ask. Does masturbation fall within the category of sexual immorality and sensuality? Now, we could, you know, we could give our gut reaction, our gut opinions here, and some could say, oh yes, and but how do we know? Does, does it fall within the category of sexual immorality? Because obviously those things, right? Sexual immorality and sensuality are forbidden. You see that, right? I mean, that's plain enough. He says, let us walk this way, not this way. And the way we're not to walk in is not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in orgies, so forth. Now, here's one thing you guys know right off. You know your Bibles at all? You know what Jesus Christ says in Matthew 5. What does He say there? You look at a woman with lust. So here's the thing. Any of those that are trying to justify masturbation, for one thing I'll guarantee you, they're not doing it with an empty mind. You know where their thoughts are? They're lusting after somebody. They have images in their mind typically. Listen, you've, you're committing adultery. You're committing fornication if you're doing it in thought. I mean, that's probably enough said right there. But let's pursue this further. Let me tell you something. Basically, 1 Corinthians 7. What we have right there is Paul's answering some questions that the Corinthians posed to him concerning sex, concerning whether it's good, whether it's bad, marriage. You know, he starts out that chapter, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but then he goes on and he says, you know, singleness is good, but if you end up getting married, and he talks about, you know, the, the conjugal obligations that a man has to his wife and a wife to the man, and he says various things. In 1 Corinthians 7 2, listen to this. Because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. You know what Paul doesn't say? Well, because of this temptation to sexual immorality, men and women should go masturbate. Now you're going to listen, you're going to, listen to that and you're going to say that's foolish. That sounds, that sounds perverse. That's what I want you to feel. Because I think that's what Paul wants you to feel. The, here's the thing. What is the only outlet sexually in all the Bible that's undefiled? The marriage bed. Paul says, if you're burning with sexual desires, he doesn't say, well, it's okay to masturbate sometimes infrequently. No, he only gives one way out. Then let a man take a wife. That's basically it. If they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. It's better to marry than to be aflame with passion. Folks, there's only one way out. There's only one way that is pure. There is only one way that is right. There is only one way that God advocates. There is only one way that's in marriage. That's it. That is it. There's none other. Listen to this. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 3 through 5. This is the will of God. What's the will of God? Your sanctification. That you abstain from sexual immorality that each one of you know how to control his own body. You see, folks, what masturbation is, it's a lack of self-control. That's what it is. And we're being told self-control. Each one of you needs to know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. And like I appealed to your conscience before, you know masturbation is not holy and there is no honor in it. And here it is. Not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Let me ask you something. Why does somebody masturbate? A passion of lust. Don't tell me there's no lust involved. Don't tell me you're doing it for the glory of God. You're doing it because of lust. You're doing it because you don't have self-control. 
And unless you think it's a light matter, what I'm, what I'm telling you is sexual immorality definitely includes this. It definitely does. You can be sure of this. Everyone who is sexually Im immoral or impure or who is covetous has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Brethren, you know what? One of the indications of people in the last times is they lack self-control. You know what? One of the things Paul really presses upon Timothy, presses upon Titus, presses upon these men, these young men, flee youthful lusts. Be self-controlled. It's a self-control issue. And I'll tell you this, if you're burning with sexual passion, get married. He doesn't give you an outlet in masturbation. He says, get married. Be self-disciplined. And if you can't contain yourself, get married. There's no other. That's the only two. You stay single and pure. Control your bodies in holiness and in honor. Or get married. And the outlet for that is the marriage bed, which is undefiled. You know what the Scripture says in Romans 6.13? Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. Are there any of you here that think presenting your sexual organs to God in masturbation is righteous? Any of you think that's presenting your members to God? 